love them. Perfect. Thank you. There we go. We got, we'll look at this. We'll get the screaming Davis in there. There we go. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait, here we go. Guess what I'm drinking. Water? Gin. Agua. <laughs> Agua, yeah. Okay, ready? Yep. Oh shit, that fingernail. Hello! 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 Hi. So oh, I'm like real fancy. I went and got champagne. Okay. <gasps> you go, <Yeah>. girl. <laughs> we I was like, I don't get to day drink very often these days. So I was like, I'm going for the real stuff today. Carrie, we we rate. We we oh, who is this? Oh, this is here. Come here. Come here. This is my six month old Felix. Oh, hi, Felix. <laughs> hey, hi. Hi. He's like, oh, these women are scaring me. <laughs> hey, hey, hi. 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 Wow. What is this? Thanks, so cute. Six months? Six months. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, Olivia. Thank you. Oh. I know. It's crazy. I know. It was really funny during my whole pregnancy um, because I had Felix at 44. They were like, I mean, this is just a geriatric pregnancy and we're just so, I mean, you have just done so great. And I was like, okay, I get it. I'm a medical marvel. I'm a grandma. Can we move on? please? <laughs> geriatric. Geriatric at, pregnancy. At 44. At 44. And I mean, it was awesome. I mean, I didn't have any issues at all. So shout out to all my women of a certain age, for sure. I, I would like to spank those doctors, though, please. Yeah, right? I know. 44, you look fabulous. Oh, thank Good. you. Thank I'm you. I'm Sandra, by the way. Nice to meet it's, you. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. Oh, come it. on. Oh, come on. Great. That's great. I think Carrie's being an instigator, are you? Um, I am because, okay, FYI people, Olivia and I have known each other for a very long time. <laughs> a very long time. I think it's been like almost 15 years, I think. Really? It's been at least, yeah, maybe, maybe not that. Yeah, no, I think it's been about that long. 14 years, maybe. Oh, yeah. We old girl. We old. <laughs> Stop it, Carrie. Know. <laughs> okay, we just we're talking about the geriatric thing. Stop oh, it. Geriatric. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. listen, we can be old and fabulous. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, Carrie and I knew each other when we were both brunettes. I mean, that's, that's how long this is like. I have to explain this situation because um, our air conditioner broke, and so the AC guys were coming during the time of this interview and so we moved everything into the bedroom so I wouldn't hear and they, they wouldn't disturb us and then I was like Chris I look like I'm in jail against this wall and I'm like I know exactly what I'm gonna put on the wall because go Gators I mean roll tide that's all no. I'm gonna say roll tide Carrie you know better than that okay oh my <laughs> goodness Carrie Listen, I mean, she's, she's our guest. You're supposed to be oh, nice. I'm sorry. We've been friends a long time, and it's a throwdown. Every, I mean, I remember when we were living in New York. It was like a massive college football throwdown. All oh, the my time. gosh. Anytime there were games, we were like, where are we going to watch the games? Where are we going? <laughs> Always. So where are you? Where, where are you coming to us from today? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, I actually, um, Carrie mentioned New York. I lived in New York for about 12 years, and uh, almost two and a half years ago, moved down here to Atlanta. I moved down here with Full Cycle, which is the company I work for. And it was just for me, I, I love New York. I originally went to New York because of singing and then of course stayed because I loved it. Um, but I had my son Harper, who will be five in August and it just wanted to be closer to family. And so I'm originally from the South. My husband's originally from the South and um, this opportunity came up in Atlanta and Soul was like, hey, you want to go? And it just seemed like everything just kind of worked out. And so here we are. And I really, I have no ties to Georgia. Um, definitely not to any of their football teams. But um, I, I know, I know. Um, but I we really, we enjoy it. Um, it's, um, it's a really cool city. It actually has quite a bit of culture. And obviously, they, you know, have an opera company here. And We've taken advantage of all of that, which has been lovely. So, yeah, I Yay! really enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, really, I really wanted to, um, I'm so, thanks for coming on here and talking with yeah. us. 
yeah. I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to talk about so much of what's happened in your life is kind of can help a lot of people I think now. Um, you and I met uh, at a young artist program. You were trained and were planning on having an operatic career. Um, and FYI people, this voice is enormous and gorgeous. So, but then, but then you got on The Biggest Loser and it changed your life. And you made a decision to change, I feel like the word of the moment is pivot, to do yeah. something else. And I'd love to, I know I'm so effing sick of that word. Excuse every, me, everybody. Uh -huh. But it's everywhere. everywhere. I know, I know, I know. But you are the original. You were pre pivot, pivot. You were pre pivot. <laughs> pre, like, you know, forced against the wall pivot. Um, but regardless of what the reasons are, it's still really scary and really hard. And like Carrie said, um, you know, I was trained, I went to the University of Alabama and then uh, got my two masters at New England Conservatory and then immediately did the whole like young artist program grind. And instead of like continuing in that realm, I just got, I started, just started getting hired by opera companies. So I just, I played, I'm Carrie, I'll tell you, I had like kind of one of those voices that just had it was like I wasn't quite mature enough for my own voice, so I played every old lady, every witch, every sidekick, every like you know, um, Aliza, you know, like all I was mezzo, yeah, um, and uh, more definitely more on the dramatic side. And if I had stayed in it, maybe would have gone down the Wagner route. Like I was really headed that direction. Um, but it was one of those things where I felt like I just constantly was being told, especially back then, um, it was always like, wow, we would really love to hire you, but you know, we just need you to lose like 40 pounds or we would, we would love, you would be <sighs> great, your voice is just, but we can, really, we can only hire you for, you know, the witch in Hansel and Gretel or the this or the that. So I, and, and for a long time, I just was like, my time will come, my time will come. Um, and then Biggest Loser came along, which was like one of those moments where you're just like, how is this even real? Why, how is this happening to me? And, you know, they were super excited about the whole opera, like storyline in my story. And I, at that time, I mean, I was still like, I mean, I was taking all the lessons, all the coaching, trying to meet all the Oh, people. really? Okay. Oh, yeah. So you were, all, you were still full on. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, like sitting on those benches at, you know, NOLA, all those places, all the auditions, all the things. I did all the things. Um, and it was actually having some success. Like, I felt like I was actually doing all the steps and whatever. Um, and then I went through Biggest Loser and lost 129 pounds, have kept the majority of that off for almost, it'll be 10 years next May, which is also crazy. I know, yay, we were looking that up. That is great. We watched you, by the way, my husband and I, we watched oh you gosh. as we I sat with that. popcorn and, I you know. Love that. Well, I know, Biggest Loser in my house was always pizza night, always. It was always like, what are we going to uh, order and watch, you know, Steve? Bob and Jillian, <laughs> always. Um, but then it was like, I got off of, um, Biggest Loser. I actually had an episode where they let me sing on the scale, which was really cool. And, um, they, I, when I got off, I, I started getting random like offers for auditions and things. And there was a lot of momentum there, but there was just like something that was the only way I know how to explain it is there was just like something in my heart that was like that adage of too much is given, much is required. And I just kept thinking, I have waited my whole life to get healthy and to get these tools. And I just really feel passionate about paying this forward to other people. And so for me, it wasn't like I all of a sudden didn't like opera or didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things for me that I learned while I was that Biggest Loser is that Yes, opera was the medium that I was using, but my gifting is communicating with people, whether that's through music, whether that's through speaking, whether that's on a spin bike or you know, in a TED talk. I mean, who know, you know, it doesn't matter. My passion and my gifting is communication. So wow. that really helped me kind of pivot, to use that word, because yeah. I didn't feel like I was giving up on my dreams or throwing my, you know, people say all the time, like, oh, don't you regret, like, leaving opera, and my thing is, I feel like regret is a manifestation of how you feel in your present situation, because mm -hmm. it, it has nothing to do with what you left, because 
you know, if you are currently happy and fulfilled with what you're doing, regret doesn't exist in your life. So yeah, it's another chapter. You just, you turn the page and you moved on to chapter two. And there, you know, that bravo for that. I mean, obviously the, the opportunity was there and you found something that you were even more passionate about and, and you've changed people's lives. That's so true. I think that's what matters. Not, not yeah. what you do, but how you did it. Absolutely. Yay! Yay! Um, and I was so thankful to find Full Cycle because, you know, Carrie, I know you've done Full Cycle, and I don't know if you, if Sandra, if you've ever done Full Cycle, but it's one of those. Um, there is a large kind of performance aspect to teaching mm. the editors, you know, the lights and the this and how you curate the music, and so I feel like even though I may not be in a corset, you know, downstage left or whatever. I, I definitely have aspects of that performing that I have to use every day. I mean, there are definitely days that I don't want to get up on that bike. And so I have to find my inner diva and be like, that these people paid money to see me get on this bike today, you know? Um, and so that has really served me and my ability to think quick, my ability to think about inner dialogue and to continue to Am I, it, it, what's energy? Like, I mean, you guys know, like mm -hmm. singing is such a like figurative energy between you and the audience. So it's kind of all of those things have really come into play for me. Um, and I think that's going to be crucial and valuable to anybody right now in any industry, but specifically in the arts, if you have to pivot and shift, you're not abandoning all those things you've learned. If anything, I think right. you're like taking it all with you, you know? Yeah, sure. So, and you can you could probably yell at those people in that class really well. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I mean, there I want people are always like, Oh, you know, I bet you're so glad you have that microphone. I'm like, girl, I don't need a microphone. I could I could scream over all that music if I had to, you know. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing now now during COVID? Okay, you know, let's 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 get down to the nitty gritty of it all because hey, you just had a baby. I right? just had a baby. Yeah. Okay. And B, I mean, our world has just been like flipped upside down. And I know that Carrie and I, we, this is like a daily conversation about exercise and how we're working our patooties off and still the weight's not coming off. And, it, <gasps> and I know, and our exercise it's, regime just isn't cutting it. What, what, what can we do? And are, are you going through this too? Oh my gosh. You know, I, I just had a conversation with a girlfriend of mine the other day and I was just like, I mean, by this point with my first kid, I had lost all the weight and more, you know, and um, I had, and she said, you know, you also have to remember that yes, you're eating all the things doing. I mean, I have a spin mic in my bedroom. I'm do, getting on it. I'm doing all the things. But we're also doing all this through a, a very large trauma. Like you, I think a lot of us forget that what's going on right now is, is a trauma. It's a trauma mentally, it's a trauma physically. I mean, I've never in my entire life spent this much time in my home, ever. I mean, I'm a doer, I, you know what I mean? I mean, you all yeah. know, y'all are flying everywhere in rehearsals on your feet. And you know, there's only so much you can do. So I think right now for me, I've just been trying to do as much as I can and have a little grace that this is just for a time. Yeah. This isn't going to be forever. Um, and you know, it, there are going to be days that you wake up and go, not today. I'm, I don't want to get on that bike today. And that's, uh, that's okay. I mean, that's okay anytime, mm -hmm. but it's right. Especially yeah. right now. Um, but I do also think it's an incredible opportunity. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time I open Instagram, I feel like I have like 500 live videos of in, like all kinds of fitness people doing every kind of free anything right. you can known to man so there it's is true. a lot of options out there if you want to do those um and it's an opportunity i started running again which i have hadn't done in a long time and i just thought the other day, I was like, why did i ever stop doing this and i was like oh that's right because i have to be on a I have to be on a bike every day right. so i think it's just an opportunity to try new things you know think out of the box that's another big term that i'm constantly going over think out of the box think out of the box 
I, yeah. I found, um, I, it was annoying to me to, you know, I thought, oh great, I'm home. I can now finally spend more time on my spin bike that I have in my house or whatever. Now I can lift the weights that I really smartly bought the minute I got off the road from this whole disaster. Um, yeah. I know it took months for Amazon to get the weights, the hand weights. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate that I was still in China, by the way, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Oh. <laughs> but, um, it's on a slow boat. But um, what I found though was that it, I had to stop looking at the scale and look at my mental health and realize that what you're saying, the trauma and the drama and the stress and the sadness and the, the myriad roller coaster ride of emotions, that the bike was keeping me sane. Even when I didn't get on it, even the days where I was like, I'm not, I'm in a bad mood, I'm not getting on it. Chris was like, take a 20 minute class. Cause you know, I've, now that I'm home, I'm a huge Peloton girl. And so they have 10 minute classes, 20 minute classes that you can get yep. on and just ride. And it wasn't about exercise or weight loss. It just was about clearing my head. It was about putting on an instructor that makes me laugh because I love their playlist. Like even today I woke up and Swan and I were just talking about this before you came on. It's like one of those slump days. And I knew that I, I just needed to be in a better headspace. And so there was a class that was a Britney Spears class, even though I'm not a Britney fan. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing uh, you know, me. Olivia, I can't. I'm I know sorry. I'm gonna, we're gonna. We're just gonna have to cut her out of this. Yeah. I'm gonna get I killed mean. for saying that on the internet that I don't. That Britney. I'm like Britney. But let me tell you something. Girl can dance. Spinning to Britney is the life. best. The best. <laughs> the best. The best. I'm telling you, it's so funny. Like, you know, there are so many. I mean, I'm have become one of the biggest Justin Bieber fans. I am not ashamed. <laughs> I used to be like. I don't think I'm allowed to say that because I could be his mother like two times over. However, let me just tell you, I, if you love spinning to Britney, you should spin to some Justin. It really? Is, it's magic on a bike. It telling gets you, you moving, it, right? It's the best. It's so <laughs> cheesy. I find that sometimes on spin bike, the cheesier, the better. It just is like stuff you maybe wouldn't listen to in your car, right. but I mean, well, magic on bike. guilty pleasure. Guilty, guilty pleasure, pleasure yeah. music. But, That's what yeah. I call it. <laughs> But I just, I needed it for my mental health. It was, I don't know what exercise does. And even when we get on our real bikes and go biking around the city, which we did too, um, it just always made me feel better. It made, it just, I always, it, it cleared my, it cleared my head and I could focus on other things and be more positive. It's the endorphins, about, you know, it, happy, yeah. right? Definitely. And I always think there's something also about, like, I always tell myself, if you just get on the bike or go outside, even if it's like, I don't feel like doing anything intense today, I just get out and like walk to a pace that you can't hold a conversation or something, just like actually like moving your body. It's, it's, you're, you enjoy it while you're doing it, but there's something about the magic of the victory when you're done. Like I was saying this yesterday, I do this thing called Cyber Soul Sundays. It's like 15 minutes on my Instagram live on Sunday nights. It's just a place to like, love yourself and start your week. And I was just saying last night, I, I don't do that anymore. Like simple things, like into the workout, like I should be excited about that. I should get on my Instagram and be like, yo, I just went, you know, got on my spin bike for 20 minutes. I needed it. There's something about celebrating those little victories that I feel like, especially during this time, like people are just like, well, that just seems so like trite and whatever. No, you still have to do those things. You still have to take those moments and be like, you know what? I was in a crappy headspace. And I got yeah. on my spin bike for 20 minutes and that's off. That's amazing. And you have to celebrate yeah. those things for sure. Definitely. Thank you. No, that's, you know, that's really good that's advice it. to everybody. And, and being stressed, I know that I just started going to, I have PCOS and, and we want to talk about that as well. Yeah, I know. Carrie told me. And yeah. um, I just started going to a new doctor here in Canada, uh, Jason mm -hmm. Fung. And about intermittent fasting and all of that. And it's for people with PCOS. And we're, he was talking about the cortisol when we're stressed and your body yeah. creates more cortisol. And it just gets harder and harder to lose weight. And I mean, we're all, it's, it's like one thing after another that's just fighting against us. So yeah. I, I really think, Carrie, you talking about just your, changing your mood and just doing it. Like Olivia said, I appreciate that. And yeah. especially if, now talk to us about a little bit about your PCOS and your whole journey with that and getting pregnant and everything too. Yeah, I I was at, sorry. Yeah. No, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's it, and I remember I was diagnosed at 24. 
Um, and I remember back then, like, I mean, now you kind of hear about it and you'll see articles about it. It's become a little more just talked about, but I, I mean, I literally, I'll never forget. I left the doctor's office and was like, oh my gosh, like I thought I had cancer or something. I didn't understand what this, I, I mean, you know, I just immediately and in my 20 year old brain was like, oh my gosh, I have this awful thing. Like, you know, I, I was very confused. Um, but you know, kind of going through it, it was, I just remembered the one thing she told me all kinds of scientific things and how this can help you. But the only thing I remember leaving that the only thing I heard was because you have this, it's going to be virtually impossible or very difficult for you to A, lose weight and B, have children, which were like the two things that I wanted more than anything. Like I, I've literally been a, a chubby kid. I was a chubby, ba I've been chubby my whole life. That's just like part of my story. And um, I just remember leaving there and just being completely devastated and not until years later. I mean, I, I listen, I've tried every thigh master. I've tried every magic pill. I've tried every little diet. I've been on the Jenny Craig's and the Weight Watch. I've done it all. I have done it all. More Amen. than once. So more than once. And I'll never forget um, when I finally like went to Biggest Loser, finally starting to understand things like that about, well, these foods, if you have PCOS, are going to be better for you and more beneficial for you than, than this. This type of exercise is mm -hmm. probably going to not, you know, jack your cortisol all up. I mean, like this, it was like completely like just life altering for me. And all of a sudden, like, you know, um, Jillian, I'll never forget one of the things she said to me, she was like, whenever you can finally get to a point where you understand that exercise is not your punishment, it's not, you're not punishing your body because it's bad, right. that you're learning to, to become friends with your body and know that mm. exercise is that time. It's like, like you would spend with your friend having coffee. She's like, right. this is the time that you get to learn your body. It's like, and every time you do it, you're going to become more intimate, more connected, more. And that to me, even to this day, I have to remind myself because I always go into that. Like, oh, I ate a cookie. I got to go yeah. run it <laughs> off. Like, that is just like the worst mindset because food is not bad. It's meant no. to be enjoyed. It's not, but this, it took me a long, long time and I still struggle. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, well, I've got it all figured out. girl." But <laughs> I don't have, I don't have anything figured out, but I, I love the journey of it. And, yeah. um, and like you said, finding a new doctor, maybe that's going to have some more insight into your metabolism and your hormones yeah. and all of that. I mean, it's all a part of the journey. And I was really fortunate um, when I um, went into Biggest Loser, my PCOS was probably at its worst. I was at the highest weight. I was, um, I was 265 when I weighed in at Biggest Loser, but I had gotten up to uh, like in the 290s um, prior, like a couple months prior to actually going. Um, and, um, I'll, I remember the doctor was like, wow, like everything, everything is just really messed up in your whole female system from your hormones to your ovaries, like all of it. And when I left Biggest Loser and had all my testing and done for my exit, they were, um, I just remember them being like, you have reversed like 90% of the things that was your body. I, it was just amazing how movement and food was medicine for my body. And for both Harper and Felix, I was able to get pregnant unassisted, and I, I randomly, this is such a weird thing that I just figured out the other day, I actually did a round of Whole30, which is, um, I do this periodically, it's great for PCOS girls and ladies, um, but I did a round of PCOS the month before I got pregnant with both of them, like just, just randomly, like it just, oh, okay. and so um, I really am such a big believer, especially for anything, if you have any kind of chronic illness, that food and movement is the best medicine. I mean, obviously follow your doctors and do all the things, but know that, you know, if things aren't working to always go back to the fundamentals of movement and food for sure. Wow. So. Thank you. Really. It's, it's, that's in inspirational, really, you know? Yeah. And it's just, you know, like I said, I was a grandma and I had a baby. So, I mean, you know, it is never too late for anybody. Please. I mean, I, I just always want to encourage people like, you know, it's never too late. There's always options and things. And so um, to not to get discouraged. I remember um, a long time ago was information that stuck with me for a really long time was um, talking to a nutritional therapist 
that made me look at food not as a good and bad thing, you know, that made me taught me what food was my body thrived on and that I was very aware of what choices I was making and what the consequences of those choices were going to mm -hmm. be. And it was really about how I felt. Like when I ate that, how did I feel an hour later, two hours later, three hours later, and was it worth it? And so yeah. even with, because I'm a, I'm very public about that. I'm an emotional eater. Um, it was like, I could always handle it until emotions yeah. until like something huge happened, like loss of my father. And then I, whenever the weight crept up, I, I knew exactly what I was doing the entire time, but I, it of was way through something that traumatic that I could cope with. And what's been interesting is that this is traumatic too, this loss of job, not wondering if I'm ever going to have my career again. Um, it's, it feels like a loss, not the same as losing a human life, but it still is in a, tr a trauma. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting to watch myself how I've, with food and alcohol and all that kind of stuff, how I've been able to manage what I've been able to manage. And I'm really kind of going, okay, girl, you're, this is like the, now you've moved into this level. So good for you. <laughs> Learning how to manage. Yeah. Well, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, we didn't gain all this weight overnight. You know, and it's not going to go away overnight either. And, and, you know, that's something in my journey that I've learned. Well, yeah, and I, and also it was um, a lesson in um, finding out what is my healthy, because my healthy is different from somebody else's. My healthy mm -hmm. is gorgeous blood work. My healthy is healthy titties. <laughs> my, you know, hi. Um, my healthy is um, really strong muscles, even though sometimes those muscles are covered in, you know, fat. So, <laughs> But um, I think I think that was a whole other thing too that a body image isn't my healthy doesn't look like her healthy or doesn't look like that person's healthy and I don't think we need to judge each other based on the outside appearance because you really don't know you know what I mean as long as those numbers are looking good and you're feeling good and your joints and knees and everything else are healthy then I'm I'm for that honestly but. absolutely I, I am so and that's one of the things that I have loved for me at Soul Cycle, I, I am never going to have a six pack abs. It is not gonna it is not gonna happen. I would love that. If I somebody knows how I can go get that somewhere, let me know. No, yeah, but can I, 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 can I come with you? <laughs> we'll go together. We'll okay. go together. Um but for me, I, I'm never gonna have that like traditional, like when you think of like fitness instructor, like I think of like I always like tease Bob Harper that he just like was just born beautiful and has been beautiful his whole life like I'm just like I mean I'm fabulous don't get me wrong but I'm just the fact that my body is not gonna look like you know you know Jane superhero that's nice. like 20 and in the fit right like Julian exactly I, that's not my body but I am an athlete I am very strong I can ride that bike with the best of them and that is to me that I have a voice in that industry is such a privilege. And I feel like I, I'm such a champion for when I see other men and women who don't have some kind of perfect or what society deems as perfect. I don't deem it as perfect as like, you know, these, these cookie cutter bodies, which are great, but there needs to be more representation of everybody. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like you said, healthy looks, different on everybody yeah. um, and it's I think that's a trap that a lot of us get into trying to well, I want her healthy right um, you know what I mean like it's not a handbag you can't just you know what I mean you have to embrace your yeah. healthy was it, was it easier for you to lose the weight on the biggest loser with help because I know a lot of us now don't have the money or the the time or the, the ability to have somebody not holding our hand, but guiding us. Was Definitely. that? Yeah. And I will say, what, go ahead. People, what would you suggest to people that can't do that? And please go ahead, sorry. No, no, no. Um, I, I will tell you, to me, what made Biggest Loser so special was the isolation of it. Um, mm -hmm. I was ripped out of me. Carrie knows she was there. I literally was ripped out of my life, taken to California, I was not in contact with any of my family, not my husband, not anybody. And I had my sister there with me as my partner, but I had no phone, no computer. I, the world could have been falling apart around me like it is now, but no, the world could have been falling apart and I would have had no idea. My job was to wake up and take care of me and me only. And I was, you know, I had all day to make 
the choices that I needed to make. We had to make our own food and all of that, but you know, there was no bad foods available. So that makes it, I couldn't get in the car and go, you know, get some Jenny's ice cream, you know, I mean, that, that those options weren't there. Mm-hmm. So I, I, what I always tell people is that was a very unique situation. And it's funny because I'm in a real weight loss mindset right now, which is the first time I've had to be this way since I was on Biggest Loser for having not been at Soul Cycle now since January. This is the first oh. time that I, I really, like normally I would just go back in my job teaching like, you know, right, right. a week, you know, you're riding your bike 18 times a week. You just, the weight just comes off. So I think for me, I, I always tell people that, you know, I mean, if you think that I lost 129 pounds, but it still took nine months. And that was, a, that being my only job that it took nine, nine months, that was, which is super fast. But really, if you think about it, for the amount of concentration and time I was spending every day, like 10 plus hours a day moving my body for nine solid months with no, not one treat, cheat, whatever you want to call it, nothing, because it was not available to me. Carrie, I know. I, I, would, I know. I, I yes. might have killed somebody. Wait, wait, <laughs> no alcohol? No alcohol. No, it was, I'm telling you, it was intense. It was very intense. And that, so I always tell people, I'm like, you, I could, I will never replicate that. It was a, its own unique situation, yeah. but yeah. I do know that's also why I was so successful. There was no distractions. Yeah. There was no temptation. It was just like, I mean, you two are both hard workers. I mean, you can't be opera singers and not have that kind of drive. It's like attacking a, a new character. You just immerse yourself in it. And that was what I did. I just immersed myself in it. I think now um, and now granted we had Bob and Jillian for some of the day, many days, um, you know, while we were there. Um, but what I did learn is that a lot of, it's a lot of consistency. It's doing it six days a week. It, it is doing it, you know, it, as much as you can carve out. And I, I do think that as hard as it is, we, a lot of us do have the time right now. It's just finding the motivation to use right. that time for movement. Right. But it was a lot of, it was a lot of low and slow, believe it or not. Like, I think people are always shocked by that. They always think, oh, well, were y'all just, you know, doing like, you know, crazy boot camp workouts? No, it was a lot of hiking and walking and some spin class. And but it was a lot of low and slow. And I think that was also, Jillian talked a lot about cortisol when we were there. And she was like, you know, it's important to do high intensity things here and there, but really your bodies love low and slow, especially for weight loss, Lot, like yeah. longer time, lower impact. So, um, yeah. It, can we circle back around with jobs and pivoting and all that kind of stuff? Because I'm curious about what you, you I mean, is your title like general manager of a soul cycle? Is that what it, it is now? Or what's the title? No, I'm actually, um, I'm a master instructor with soul, with soul cycle, which is um, kind of their top tier. It's just really in the instructor world. That's kind yeah. of like the highest that you can get. And um, it's so essentially that my job, I am an instructor. I was, when I was in New York, I was a part of the training team. I trained new instructors for years and years and years. And then I also oversaw, um, I was a part of the internal like continuing education program as well. Okay. And so I was over the Toronto market, Boston, right. Long Island and Atlanta. Um, so I had like kind of like different hats at SoulCycle that I, that I did, but my, the bulk of my job was just teaching, just, just, just doing lots and lots of classes. And what does that Um, I don't know how much you're allowed to talk about now, but what does that look like moving forward? Is this an industry that's going to be more like Peloton because we don't know what's going to happen with this virus and how long we're going to be dealing with it? And, you know, we live in crazy town USA where people don't want to wear masks. Sorry, I'm a mask wearer. I believe in it. Um, So You don't have to preach to me. Yeah, I mean, like, I want the numbers to go down so we all can go back to work and stuff. How does, what does that look like for you? And is is that, in your mind, we're kind of like a lot of my singer friends are is talking about what are we going to do during this down period? So, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that you say that because I'm, it's uh, talking about when we talked Carrie about me coming on it, I was in a totally different situation even than I am now and soul cycle because of the different government local mandates. Like for instance, here in Georgia, um, we're still not soul cycle, still not open. So we have been closed now since March 
um, because the mandate is if you are in a group fitness class, which is what Soul Cycle is, you have to be 10 feet apart in every direction of one another. Well, to do that, it's you're look, it's impossible. You're looking at like four bikes. And then by the time you pay me and the electric bill and the people up front, and I mean, the, you're in the red so deep. So until that is lifted, and I live in Georgia, where people also don't wear masks. And so we can't have nice things in the state because people can't just be like smart about their health. Um, but, um, so our numbers are just through the roof. So he's not going to lift anything as he shouldn't. Um, so it's really difficult. And I, I do think until there is either a vaccine or something shifts or whatever, which we all don't know the timeline of any of that, the whole fitness industry really does have to change. Like I, I always think about Peloton, I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, they, when they first came on to the market, it was just like Peloton, <laughs> you know, everybody was like, uh, and now they're just going, yeah, Peloton, we're running to the bank, you know, mm -hmm. but it is, I think everything is really shifting digitally. So for me, I, I'm still employed by SoulCycle in the sense that I have a job. I did actually get furloughed on the 18th. That's like common knowledge. They had to furlough 95% of their instructor base. Wow. Um, and they paid us, they paid us since March. Like, I mean, you, you can't ask most people in the fitness industry got furloughed, like within the first week. I mean, they paid us the whole time. Wow. Um, and they're, they're still paying our benefits. So I, I feel wow. like that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it's, you know, something that, that, you know, is, we're able to go back sooner than later, but I do know that it's for our safety and whatever. So for me, I'm, I'm again, I'm in that position, like, all right, now what are my gifts? I go back to that place. What can I, what can I offer? What can I do? I'm doing my first webinar on August the 2nd. Uh -huh. This might go up after that, but I'm hoping it's the first of many. Um, it's a 90 minute webinar, just sheerly on motivation. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be about right. weight loss. It can be about your job. It can be about just your life, your relationship, just some really good fundamental tools about how to create motivation and how to keep it and how not having to constantly go back and get your high school pair of jeans stick it on your like closet <laughs> door it's like so much more than that you know yeah. what I mean I mean <laughs> and I speak from experience in that <laughs> but um but I'm just like you know I'm charging like 25 bucks I've been overwhelmed at the the response so far and yeah. I'm hoping yeah I mean cool. so you just have to I'm gonna start in the next couple of weeks doing some private um spin classes where I just send out like zoom links and if you have a bike get on one and we're just gonna do it together and I think you just have to look at what you're good at. What, again, like I said, what, what is your gifting? Is your gifting teaching? Is your gifting, you know, like I said, communication? Is your gifting serving others? There is so much opportunity, especially online. And that, I mean, people are at home. They, and a lot of people do have a little bit of money that they're willing to invest in themselves. So I think yeah. that it's the time to get creative. You it know? is, for sure. I love that. Okay, well, and I love that. You, I love that word gifting, where you take the talents that you were born with and given and honed. And let's see where we can use those during this time period of, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of talented people out there. So oh my gosh. How, how could the world change in a better way by using yeah. those things in this time period where of uncertainty and um, not knowing what the end game is. And um, yeah, I, re I really love that. But um, no, A, I think Peloton needs to hire you. Sorry, Soul Cycle. <laughs> Peloton, give me a call. Hey, I am a free agent. Give me a call. Give me a call. No, just kidding. <laughs> you need to uh -oh. you run Carrie, you're going to get her in trouble. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, but I do mm -hmm. also think, I mean, you two are a testimony to this. It's also the time of collaboration. Like, I have a couple of my hands with, I'm holding hands with a couple other people trying to start other things there. Because there are so many people. I mean, think about how many singers are in the same position as you guys. All of them. Everyone. <laughs> all of them. So call your singer friends, put your heads together. What do we got? What can we, what can we give? What can we do? I mean, it costs no money to throw up a website. It's free to throw up an Instagram page. I mean, you know, can, do you make jewelry? Can you, can you, are you Whatever. good at hair and makeup? Can you give people tutorials over zoom? I mean, there, I know people doing all kinds of stuff. And I think that that's also the blessing of right now because yeah. I, I just be still teaching soul cycle classes, which I love to do, but I'm hoping that this is going to 
spark a whole new yeah. chapter for me, you know? People yeah. haven't had the time to, to really look inside and say, okay, yes, this is my job, but am I really A, passionate about it? Mm -hmm. And is there something else that actually I might love to do more or, or I can supplement with, you know? And that's probably to you for doing that. I mean, shoot. You just got to get I, out there, start throwing stuff up against the wall and see what sticks, sticks. really. Yeah. So yeah. in your whole weight loss journey, because all three of us, I, it sounds like we've all done the same thing and we've done every diet, we've done every exercise. Some of us it's worked, some of us it hasn't worked. What's been the high points in your weight loss journey and what's been the low points in your weight loss journey? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think the high points, for me um, is all of a sudden having the body. And when I say having the body, I don't mean the shape. I mean, having the body that can do any kind of workout that's put in front of me. That was like, that's been like the highlight of losing weight for me. I mean, everybody loves to, you know, see the pant size go down or to be able to like wear this or wear that dress or whatever. Like all of that is, that's just gravy on the top to me, but to actually feel confident enough in my body and my athleticism to be like, Barry boot camp. Yeah. I'll show up and do that class with you. Um, you know, I mean, seriously, like just being like, Oh, I can do that. When before, even though I probably could have done it in, in my own way, I would have never even tried. And so I think the confidence that it gave me to just put on some shoes and go for a run or things that I just would have talked to myself out out of, out of fear, that has been probably the high of the high for me. Um, and then I think the low of the lows to be, to be really transparent and honest is the, the ebb and flow of weight with life. Like Carrie was saying, like, I'm definitely an emotional eater for sure. Um, and I say that I eat when I'm happy, when I'm sad, I eat in all the emotions. I mean, I just like to eat. Mm -hmm. that's what I, am. I mean I'm just never gonna be one of those people that's like it's morning let's have egg whites like that's just not me. um I'm like it's morning where are the donuts like yeah. that's just that's, yeah. that's me that is me um and and I, I truly to be honest with you I think most people are that way you know what I mean but um I think for me um just kind of laying down the idea that if life is so fluid, why is my, why should I not let my body be the same? And that there are going to be times where I'm leaner. There are going to be times where I look in the mirror and go, yeah, this is where, this is where I want to be. I feel really stable here. And then there's going to be times I look in the mirror and go, yep, there's work to do. There's work for me. I feel like there's work to do, you know? And that is, is hard to separate from, do I look good? And, oh, I look bad. I just, I look terrible right now. And I think for me, that has been probably some of the, that's been the lowest part is really having to get honest and to really grapple with the emotions that come with the fluidity. Because I'm, again, my body is always going to want to, I'm, I mean, I gain weight fast. I just, my body's always going to want to go back. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm not, you know, a heroin addict or somebody that's having to deal with that kind of addiction, but I, I have to deal with my weight journey it's i have to get up and put that jacket on every day every day it is an to... addiction and and people need to know that it, it it's a problem and and it's people can say oh it's your fault you eat too much but it is it's, it's like being an alcoholic it's like being a drug user and yep. it it's an it's an issue that needs guidance from doctors and guidance Absolutely. from professionals and yeah. good for you and for I getting that yeah, and I think the difference is like, you know, when you know you look at somebody who maybe is not a food addict, they can just eat a cupcake and be fine with that. But mine is mm -hmm. not only do I, do I eat the cupcake, but then I think for the rest of the day about the other four that are in there. And at some point in the day, I'm going to talk myself into letting me eat the other four. Like that, yes. that, that, you know what I mean? And that, yeah. that's the difference for me it's like I can't just be satisfied with some with one thing and so I'm always learning about that and trying to be vigilant about that mm -hmm. and knowing that there is no cure for that but there's always like awareness and tools and grace oh my gosh the amount of grace right. you have to whew, you have to have for for that and it's okay you know yeah that totally. there's always another opportunity and genetics plays such a big part of it 
in this. Yes. We, we, we fight. So sometimes we just fight and fight and fight. But okay, I'm sorry. I have a big head. I can't do anything about that. You know, it's just like it, 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 if, if your parents were overweight and it, genetically that you're predisposed to that. So oh yeah, we can embrace that and say, okay, this is the best that I can be. Like Harry saying, I have my happy weight and this is my, this is my weight that I feel happy at. Other people's are different. And I just wish people wouldn't always judge us too because Definitely. they don't know the whole story. No. And I think, you know, like you said, there's also something to embracing that part of, of who you are. Like, I mean, Carrie will tell you, I was like 300 pounds and be like, I really wish I could play Hansel and Hansel and Gretel. And Carrie was like, girl, you need to move on from that. Like, I mean, like, and it, it was just because I'm, I, even at my thinnest, I am 5'10", flat footed. I am, I, I have a very large head. I have, I'm a big lady. I just am, you know. We're and singers. So, yeah, of course. So, I mean, that was just like never in the cards for me. And I think also, like, it's not even about like, you know, giving up on those, but also being like, hey, you know what? Like, maybe I, I'm not a, you know, a Hansel or a trouser old mezzo, but maybe I, maybe my body is going to gift me in these roles or whatever. You know, I think to go back to kind of an opera, that was always something that I, I always fought who is my physicality. I just fought it and fought it and fought it. I always wanted to be something else, you know? And I think there is something about also just embracing that. Um, yeah. Okay, can you answer, I, this is really for myself, but I know that there's other people that feel this way. So I'm really comfortable in an in exercise class setting. So get me on a bike. I don't care what I have on my body, I, whatever. I'm good to go, you know? Uh, fat rolls hanging out. I don't care. I'm having a great time. Yeah, right. in there and dance and just do it now. But if you tell me, Carrie, we're going to go outside and run. We're going to have a little jog walk sesh. I almost have a panic attack because I cannot, I don't, I feel like everybody that drives by, somebody's going to yell something out. Somebody's going to judge me. It's like this, yeah. this, per, this, this strong female personality that I've had my whole life and can get in front of all these people and sing and, and do this crazy shame against with Sandra and put it out on the internet. You know, like that takes some balls, right? I got some big, yes. but I, my balls shrivel up <laughs> when we talk about going out and running on the sidewalk and I've been texting some of my other friends that are doing this right now. I'm like, how are you doing this? How? I would be so self-conscious. So what do you say to somebody who's afraid to try something new, afraid to put themselves in an uncomfortable situation, even if that's in their own living room doing a yoga class or whatever it mm -hmm. is? Mm -hmm. what, what is your suggestion to me to be like, girl, grow some balls? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, I, I mean, literally, girl, let's, I, I, think, I think it's kind of two parts. One is, it's like that same thing. Like if you try to ease into the pool one step at a time, you ain't never getting in the pool. Sometimes yep. you just got a jackknife cannonball in the deep end. You just got to jump in and do it. And then the more you do it, the more comfortable you become with it. Sometimes it is just the, okay, I'm just going to go out with all my fabulousness and I'm going to just jiggle my way down the gulch or in Nashville or wherever you are. Um, I think that, I mean, I, I, that it's really hard. And you know, it's funny. I think all the time I have to like back myself up almost every time I teach a full cycle class because full cycle has mirrors like behind the bike. And I think all the time, I'm just like, every time we're just like tapping it back and I'm just like, I'm so into it. I'm like, my butt, my butt is in this mirror. These people are just seeing my butt, you know? And I mean, it's like, you have to, it's all here. And so there, you just have to sometimes just be like, it's all right. It's okay. It's funny. Cause I'm total opposite. Like I could teach in front of all kinds of people in an exercise class. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I can run outside and, and go out in a sports bra and about run. You would never catch me wearing that sports bra teaching a school cycle class. No way. Because I just feel like everybody I don't know, like in an exercise class, I feel like it's so much, it's like a fishbowl a little bit. And it's also why I love group fitness. Right. Um, but I think I have to sometimes like psych myself up. Like it's okay. Everybody's well, everybody's dying. Nobody's looking at your butt. Trust me. Exactly. Their own butt. Now's and, the time to is, do it. No. And really and truly, I don't think I've ever, ever, um, 
literally driven down the road and seen somebody running, no matter what size, and I've never even thought about their size. Every time I see anybody running, like I literally have gotten into this thing in my neighborhood where I like roll my window down, I'm like, go girl, you go girl. Like, I mean, when I see people running, I'm like, yes, you go. I mean, because I, it's, I just think it's so awesome that when anybody decides to spend any time moving their body, like that's just awesome. And I really think that overall, no matter what people are just, people want to be proud of each other. They really do. Yeah. And the ones that don't are just jerk people anyways. And who cares? They can because suck it. They're, they're, they're so miserable anyways. They, who cares? You could do I, it, Carrie. Come, Carrie on. come on. You can do it. If I lived near you, if I lived near you, I'd put on a mask and I'd jiggle it down the street with you. But, um, <laughs> I've been doing it and like my little body's like mm, 51 years old trying to jog you just go I never jogged before and it's, it's great it's it, it great. takes time though I mean you know the older you get your knees kind of go like hmm what are you wanting yeah. me to do oh yeah oh yeah but what about that too like easing into fitness because I know a lot of people now I, I know a certain somebody that might have done a little bit too much and might have hurt her shoulder just a little bit. I have tinnitus. I found out I have tinnitus in oh. my left shoulder because I'm a dummy and picked up the heavy weights and also thought, oh yeah, sure. Get your booty down there and do some push-ups, full on push-ups, not knee push-ups, full on, because I think no. badass. Any advice on people that haven't been exercising or maybe how to ease into it gently? I mean Go ahead. What were you going to say, Carrie? My cardio, no problem. I didn't have, my cardio is fine. But I thought, well, I'm going to do all these Peloton weightlifting classes. Why not? You know, I need to farm up Tony's arms. I'm going to look like a badass when I get out of COVID. Because <laughs> Carrie awesome. doesn't do anything half ass. No, absolutely. So, <laughs> and I love that about her. Me so, too. It's my favorite. So I get down on the floor and think, and then I'm like, oh, that didn't feel so good. Was that hurt a little bit? No. I think like just as anything, like you would never just go sing Tosca on your first try without practicing. You wouldn't ever do it, <laughs> you know? It's, I mean, I know I keep going back to opera, but I don't get to talk to opera, about opera very much. Um, but I do think it's like anything, like you have to work up to it. One of my most favorite workout, running workouts, um, that I always tell people is um, I call it a run down or a run up. It depends on, you could do it either way, but you just go out either on a treadmill or outside. You walk for five minutes to warm up. You mm -hmm. run for two minutes. Okay. You walk for two minutes. You run for four minutes. You walk for two minutes. You run for six minutes. You run, walk for two minutes. You run for eight, walk, 10, walk. You can extend those walk periods to 15 minutes if you want to it doesn't matter the point is that when you're done you run for 30 minutes in total and um it's it's a really great way you can also do it you know two four six four two four you could do it in triangles there's so many different ways but just and there's something mentally about knowing i'm going to get a walk oh my gosh after i run and when i say run you can run at a walk pace. I mean, it's just the physicality of moving your body like you're running. I call it the chubby girl shuffle sometimes. Like sometimes I'm just shuffling, yeah. you know? Um, and oh, you, know, no. you know what I mean? So I yeah. think like choosing things like there's, you can't just decide I want to run if you've never run and go out and do a 5k. I mean, you're going to have shin splints and busted butts and all the things, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, really, um, and so, or, and, you know, like Carrie said, like maybe start out with knee pushups or pushups against the wall even, or, and work your way up. It's like, and you know, the more time you take really letting your body acclimate, the less it hurts. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but at this point in my life, the last thing I want is like you said, is wake up and my knees hurting or my hips hurting. I, right. just, I don't want that. Like I just, my body doesn't snap back as fast. It's fast Slow and steady. Like that. Slow and, slow and steady yeah. okay and that's what they taught you at the biggest loser too yeah slow and that's steady. it slow and steady that's... there was very little high 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 intensity working out there just was not a lot of that it was a lot of um like i said just a lot of slow and steady and um you know and then once i we started becoming more you know where our athleticism really started rising up then you mm -hmm. know they would challenge us with different types of like more running or 
you know, little bursts of like higher intensity, but overall it was a lot of, like I said, a lot of low and slow. And you still lost weight, a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, one of the weeks that I had the biggest weight loss was one of the weeks I, I did the least amount of working out. And I remember the whole time being like, well, this is the week I go home. I'm going home. This is, I'm going home. I'm going to pack my bags because I'm going home. And I ended up winning. I won, I lost 16 pounds in one week, and it was pretty far into my way. It wasn't like at the very beginning. It was yeah. pretty far in, and I think it was like just a combination of my body just chilling out for a little while. And you need to have yeah. weeks like that where maybe you just take a week and you just walk. You know what I mean? And let your body just enjoy just the calmness. Yeah. Adjust. Um, Doesn't it adjust. need you need those leveling points? Those. Definitely. adjusting moments too because I think if you push it push it push it like singing if you push it push it push it all the time something is going to break or it's just not going to want to move Absolutely. and shift Absolutely. good for you well congratulations yeah. thank you Harry anything else we want to ask or are we are we wanting to go with rapid fire well no I mean I could talk to Olivia for I know I could too <laughs> I've been great I've had so much home. fun um yeah. Yeah, no, let's rapid fire. Are you ready for and this? You got to drink champagne. Rapid fire. Are you are you ready for this? Yes. Are y'all just gonna ask me rapid fire questions? We ask you rapid questions and then you yeah. can take as long or as short as you want to answer. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll I'll let Carrie start it because cause cause she's your friend. Okay, what do you do to make those two kiddos laugh? Oh my gosh, my very favorite thing is I have the booty booty butt butt dance because I'm that parent. And so I just get up and I turn around and I just booty booty butt 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 and I just like sing it and shake my butt. And my son Harper Felix is always just like, I mean, he's six months, so he doesn't understand. But Harper, he, he never, he can't, he can't not laugh like every single time. There is just like, um, I just, I try to do that. I'll never, another thing um, that he loves the whole, like to give an example, we went to Disney World, this was a while back, a little over a year ago, and he was just having a meltdown. The one time I wanted to take his picture in front of the castle because I had just spent a thousand dollars on this trip and he was having the breakdown and I would not smile, was just being so sassy, would not, and I finally was just like, well, you better not pick your nose in front of this castle. Like you better, if I see you stick that finger in your nose. And so I have the cutest picture of him being like, like <laughs> of his nose. and that is like my most favorite picture of the whole thing. So oh. you got to make your kids laugh. It's, yeah. You just got to do silly, dumb things. And those are things they remember. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Greatest beauty, beauty tip. Oh, take care of your skin. Take care of your skin. Wear the SPS do the whole regimen with the serums and the moisturizer and and as you get older the less makeup as far as like skin makeup you'll need because you've taken care of your skin Hands beautiful down. uh favorite word favorite word oh my gosh um i don't know Favorite word. Oh, this is gonna let me think. Let me think for a second. I'm now I'm not trying to think of like something really, really good, but I don't really even have anything really, really good. Um I don't know. I think I just I like I said, I think I say booty a lot. I think that just booty. gives me fast. Like booty in general, I'm like, you better move your booty. Like you could say in so many things, like, oh your booty is looking fantastic, you know, it just takes on so many different personalities. I think it's booty for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. I love it. What is the craziest rumor you've, rumor, this is water. What is the craziest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Oh my gosh. Hands down that I went on Biggest Loser and now I'm like a multimillionaire. That and now you're what? A multimillionaire. No. Woo! No. People are always just like, oh, you know, I mean, now that you're a celebrity, you're like, really? really? I'm like, okay, first of all, not a celebrity. Second of all, not a millionaire, for sure. Um, I mean, I got a little cash prize, which was great, but people, I think they just assumed if you were on a reality show or you were on TV or something that you're just oh, like yeah. living a lap of luxury. Again, I am blessed. I mean, I have like this great house in Atlanta. I love where I live. I love my life, but I still clip coupons. Let's just be real. Gotcha. Nothing wrong with clipping a coupon, saving that 50 cents. Hello. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, man. As long Especially as you know, now. 
as long as you are organized and you're ready to go at the checkout counter. Now, if you're pulling and trying to dig for stuff, we've got a problem. <laughs> I'm so with you. That drives me crazy. I'm like, I know I have it. I know I have it. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Move along, people. Move along. Move along. Actually, especially in COVID time, get me the hell out of the store. I mean, oh. <laughs> you are not joking. I do not want to be in a grocery store any longer than I have to no. on a normal day. Um, okay. I, we asked this of performers because they're in costumes and stuff, but I feel like you are, it, you're still in performance mode when you're doing your job. So have you had any malfunctions with any of your um, clothes or your headsets or anything like that? Okay, first of all, I, and it was this way when I was thinking I'm a sweater, like uh, I sweat, like, I mean, it was always like every time like the makeup artist would just be like, oh my gosh, I have to like redo my face. And I just sweat like bullets. So um, I sweat out microphones all the time. So I've become a pro at dishing the microphone wire down my sports bra out into the new pad. I can do all of it like with this whole, and that's where I feel like the performing comes in. I do it. And I, I don't try to like do it like really sneaky. Like I make a whole thing out of it. We do like a whole thing. And I just, can you hear me? Come on. I can't, I can hear you. You know, I do a whole thing. Um, so that has happened. And the worst, um malfunction I ever had was I don't know if y'all remember this is I'm this is really dating myself but um when I first started teaching years ago Lululemon came out with this pair of um leggings and they were the wonder under line wonder the, under! Uh, yes. yeah remember wonder under yes like needs ever bring those back um but um they just were great they anyways they came out with a, it was like called like a performance fabric version or something like that. And they were olive green. They had a line, it was like olive green. It was in the fall, like a uh, rust. And I bought these olive green ones. And I was like, oh, so oh, I love it. such a different color. I taught in them. And, you know, you're on a podium with up lighting and mirrors and after class. I know where you're going. Oh, yeah. This woman came, came up, up to me and she was just like, like I just normally wouldn't say anything I just the whole time I just kept going oh my gosh I'm, I have to tell her because she doesn't know and she was like do you wear those leggings a lot and I just Amelia was just like oh no they're brand I literally bought them yesterday they're brand new she was like I mean you can see right I could see your whole butt like and I could tell she meant like the whole butt and so she said they're like almost completely sheer and I was just like that's amazing because 74 people have just watched my butt crack for 45 yep. minutes. And they recalled shortly after that, they recalled all of those design flaw because they were all com like literally like wearing pantyhose. So I was just like, well, great. The Upper East Side, they have all seen my butt crack for 45 minutes and awesome. So that is like still to this day, I do the squat test when I get, uh, I always tell Ben, I always do the like squat test. And I'm like, can you see my butt? Can you see my butt? Can you see my butt? Because <laughs> that's my, now one of my biggest fears for sure. <laughs> so what's notes. your guilty pleasure? Yeah. Oh my gosh, my guilty pleasure. Um, I love, like, I think I kind of exposed myself earlier, but I love pop music. I love Justin Bieber. I've been to so many, I've been to almost every Britney concert that's ever been. I didn't get to go to Vegas, which makes me so sad, but I love pop music and I've always have. I love pop. I love hip hop. I love, but I love like within those genres, the real guilty pleasure stuff. Like I just, it's always like something like when I get in the car I love to listen to that kind of music um not all the time but especially if I'm feeling down like I think that I don't know if it's also because for years being in just immersed in such I don't even like to say serious music but music that's just for us it uses so much of your brain right. um even now when I listen to opera like I'm always listening to like the person singing and like the diction like I even the other day was listening to something on NPR and I was like her diction is terrible and Ben was just like the person I looked at me was like what and I was like I still got it listen you know Yay! um but I think because that's always been such an escape for me that kind of music that it still feels that way to me now so I think that's definitely okay. oh, that and anything and Carrie knows this any kind of vampire movies whether it be like <gasps> I just did a Twilight Buffy. rewatch Oh my gosh, Vampire Diaries, like Diary of a Vampire, like all of the vampire genre. I love it. I'm Team Edward for life. You, you might have had a very small crush on 
what's his name patterson robert pattinson listen he's still a daddy i don't care what anybody what? says he is still a daddy like I'm, i mean he we he, can look he is we can um i but i'm th those are like definitely my guilty pleasures. carrie doesn't know that about me that and and what was the one with alexander skarsgård what was the oh, name of that true blood <gasps> oh my gosh the best oh, he is still my heart one of the, he is one of the number one daddies. He's on my top five for sure. He is, yes. and he's like seven feet tall, and he was Eric and True Blood. Yes, all the. He's he is he is he is probably number one daddy for me. I'm telling you, like. Oh, he is, is just cool. gorgeous. I I'm, love, I'm with you on that one. Okay, I love vampire stuff too. Go ahead, Kay. Favorite cuss word. Oh, there it is. Oh, you know, I just think to me, I mean, the obvious one is the f bomb, but I, for me. I just love a good, well, shit. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, Thank you, that's mine. I love it. Like, it just fits everything. You're like, shit, that looks so great. Or you can be like, this is a pile of shit right now. Where this, you know, I mean, it, it just fits so many sentences, emotions, shit, shit yeah. definitely mine for sure. Carrie, what's your favorite cuss word? Every time she asks me this, and I always have to say it, like, even if I'm not in the mood, I'm always in the mood to say mother. <laughs> there it is. Oh man, and sometimes that one is unnecessary for sure. I know. Do we need more? Or do we want to go for last? Uh, oh, oh, what? Oh, uh, a song that always gets stuck in your head. No. Oh, a song that always gets stuck in my head. Like a classical music song? No, any song. Or just any song? Um. Oh, you know, and this is, again, I'm going back to pop music, but do y'all remember that? And I heard it the other day. This is why it's in my head. Um, do y'all remember that song by Carly Rae Jepsen, Call Me Maybe? That was like, maybe, oh my gosh. Da, Somebody da, played da, da, that. Da. Yes, da, da, da. Call Me Maybe. Oh my gosh. I heard it the other day and I was like, I don't even know where we were, but I heard it and I kept singing it. Ben was like, why are you oh. singing? My husband Ben was like, why are you singing that? I was like, I don't know. We won't leave. But that's, that's a, one of those like earworm songs that just gets stuck in your head. Annie Lennox, Broken Glass. That is my song. Always walking on broken glass. I know Carrie's like, you are so old, Sandra. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Too. But Bye. Gotta go. Oh. That's a classic, though. That is a classic. a classic. I have a feeling if Carrie ever, if we all ever lived together, Carrie would be like, and you two listen to music on your own. Exactly. We okay, just have our vampire parties. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. That, see, people didn't know that about me. I have all the Buffy vampire. I have the episodes oh. upstairs and now, all of True Blood. I, I now, own it. Buffy, Sorry, that that was probably where my love for vampires began. I mean, that whole series, incredible. Yes. Sorry, Carrie. Dracula, all those. How am I friends with these people? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. I love it. Okay, ready for it? Yes. Last question. Okay. If heaven exists, mm -hmm. what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, I hope that, um, I, I, it just comes from my grandmother. My grandmother um, has on her uh, headstone, um, she did what she could. And I always loved that. And I, I would love to hear God say that, that you did what you could and I am proud of it. And I think that's, that's all we can ever do. As long as like you're doing everything you can and everything you do, then I think whether that's, you know, in how you want to treat other people and in the family that you desire and the job you want, as long as you're doing everything you can, then you're doing everything right. And that's, that, that's what I hope to hear. Love that. Beautiful. Love that. Love you, love you. Thank oh, you. So right. It's been so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're just like kindred spirits. This has been so amazing. Yay. Yes. The three, Yay. well, we're, you are an honorary member. We have made you an honorary member of Screaming Divas. So we're just oh going to write your name up in here because I, you are I love a it. I love it. I try my best, you know? Well, I know. It's been, it's, yeah. man, this whole experience has just been wild from like, 
I mean, I feel like I've lived like 10 lives in the last like almost seven months. It's been, and see for me, I think it was also compounded because I had Felix the 8th of January. So I was in till April, I was in maternity leave and then we had already shut down. And oh. then that, so it has just been, I haven't worked really done my job since you know begin first week in january which just feels man so i'm like who do i think i am do i like work at google or something like this is crazy you know they get <laughs> like a year of maternity. i'm like still on maternity leave is what it feels like which is so weird so um but, soon soon you know and you know what will be is, is going to be and we'll all be all right you know it's, New it's, you know i I keep teasing my parents because my parents have a um, they have a pool house outside of their pool, and I'm always like, "Well, I might just have to come live in that pool house, so just get ready. I might be coming to live with you guys, but that would be okay." Yeah. Too, so. I know, I know. Well, we'll thank there. you. Sorry to You're take up so much of your time. Oh my gosh, you guys can have all of it. I so appreciate it. It was so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see Can't you. wait all to watch right. all your stuff, your new stuff coming out out too. So yes. It's going to be good. I think it's going to be really good. I'm excited. So, for you. all right. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Okay. Later. Bye. 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 Hey, Olivia. Chubby Shuffle is about to commit, uh, commence in like two seconds. <sighs> so outside of my comfort zone. Okay. Bye. Olivia. It's day two. I don't even want to show you this hot mess underneath my hat. <laughs> I just got back. It's still weird and uncomfortable. Um, and what's crazy is that the muscles I built in my legs from spinning doesn't compare it to the muscles. And I forgot because you know, you know, Chris and I did 5Ks and 10Ks and a half marathon, but we did it together. I've never gone out by myself. So that's really not okay with me. Um, but I'm really grateful that you pushed me and said, yeah, you can do it. And, um, yeah, I can, we are capable of, uh, much more than we think we are. So thanks for that message. I love you. Day three coming. Um, FYI, it hurts really bad when I stand up. I hate you. <laughs> no, I love you so much. Bye. Olivia, chubby shuffle commencing. <laughs> um, super out of my comfort zone. But this is day three of me doing that. I promised myself I'd do it three times this week. And I'm on day three, it's not so bad. It still makes me a little uncomfortable to have everything jiggling everywhere in front of God and everybody down the streets of Nashville. But it makes me feel better when I'm done. So I'm gonna take those negative thoughts and throw them out the window and encouraging anybody else that feels like me, uh, if I can do it, you can do it. And have a giggle when you think about chubby shuffling. It makes me laugh every time. I love you, Olivia. Thanks for the inspiration and the motivation. Bye.